Hello random people, welcome to Random Garage, the channel where we're always doing something. Today on Random Garage, I'll be changing out the handlebars on my 2020 Road King here. It still has the stock handlebars on it, but I've uh, just rolled them forward quite a ways. Road King standard, I'm not sure about the special, but the standard anyway has uh, the bars stock are not internally wired. So it'll be easy to take this thing apart, but then not as easy to put the new bars on because then I'll be running the wires through the bars. But they're fairly short bars, so it'll be pretty easy. One thing I did on this bike was converted to the turn signals being up on the controls, which is like Road King Special style. The stock lights are those big lights on the front light bar that are there. I should have a picture of that I can throw up here. but I took those off and I converted to the smaller bullet turn signals up high. I'm changing to a Lucky Dave's setup. Uh, these are their Peacemaker risers. Uh, they're a three piece, top clamp, and then uh, you can get the top, their lower clamp part is pullback or straight. I got the pullback ones. And then the height comes out of the legs here. These are what they call the 10 inch legs. They're not actually 10 inches, they're, like seven but the idea is then that it's actually when it's assembled results in a 10 inch rise and then this bar here is maybe a three or four inch rise three three and a half so then overall i'll have 13 14 inch rise something like that with a little bit of pullback on the bike one of the options on the top clamp that i got was you could choose your paint color if any in there for the Lucky Dave's logo and uh, I just got the black. I probably would have got orange if they had orange for an option because I got a few orange details on the bike and there will be more in the future. I bought this setup around Thanksgiving. Lucky Dave's was having a special where you buy the Peacemaker risers and then they throw in the handlebars for free. One goofy thing about it though is that they make these Peacemaker risers so that you can put the wires through the riser. They actually go in there and down through the leg and then out into your top triple tree. But the bars they were given away with the special are not set up for that kind of wiring because the holes for the wires to come out would have to be at the clamp area instead it's at the center. So my wires are going to come straight down the center. It seems that there's very few companies that make a handlebar with the holes in the clamp area right now. There's more companies making risers like this where the wires can go through the middle. So things need to match up a little better for that clean style. This Lucky Dave stuff is really good quality, really nice chroming and stuff. But one thing I did notice right when I was unwrapping it was there's like, probably won't even show up on the camera, but there's two little, almost like a dust was in there. Two little pieces of dust when they did the chroming. But I ride my bikes anyway, so it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna get dirty. It's gonna get used and worn and, everything anyway so not that big of an issue but other than that they did an awesome job of packaging it was there was a lot of plastic wrap and then bubble wrap and on each piece and then lots of paper in the big box that they came in so they didn't get uh shook up much and banged around and everything so good job there and then because i'm going to such a tall bar i'm going with solid riser bushings for the upper triple tree give a little more rigid feel connected feel to the bike and the bars won't flex as much with the you know as opposed to having the stock rubber bushings in there the rubber bushings are there to reduce vibration to your hands and that used to be a big issue say with the evo engines but now with the milwaukee 8 that's counterbalanced very well it hardly really vibrates like the older bikes did so i don't feel those rubber bushings are really as necessary anymore and then uh, I got, this is a Harley item. This is the top clamp plate that's needed to have straight risers. So the risers can go straight up through as opposed to you know, the stock one does not have the holes in the top because the bars are obviously coming out the side. One thing I noticed right away is that it's not gonna fit. It's close, but it's not quite there. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to grind out these holes a little bit on my brand new Chrome piece here but I guess it is what it is so these are uh, 
1.47, so just a hair under 1.5 inch. And this hole here, I believe, was supposed to be 1.5 inch, but it's a little short, 1.44. So that stinks, so I don't have to take too much off it, but I have to do that a little bit. So I took a permanent marker and just drew a thin black line around the edge there, so then I could take my drill and a little grinding bit and uh, if I grind away all the black, then I should be in good shape to fit around those riser legs. I decided to just screw it right down to my wood bench here so that it stays in place as I'm grinding away in there. Otherwise, I'm holding it with one hand and, uh, you know, trying to grind with the other. These are my grinding bits I've had forever. They come in handy once in a while. I'm almost there, I just need to get the inside corners a little more, it looks like. So I uh, changed up my position, I screwed it down to a 2x4 and screwed the 2x4 to the bench. Because otherwise uh, the bit was hitting the bench when I was trying to do that part. Well they fit through there now, hopefully I've given it enough clearance so when they're actually bolted on the bike, they're in the right position so it fits nicely too. I don't think it looks too bad, it doesn't look rough or anything, jagged. I don't think it'll be hardly noticeable. And then. This thing is made out of aluminum, so it's not going to rust around those edges there where I took the chrome off. That's good. I'm just going to take the uh, file on my Leatherman and just clean up the edges just a little bit. Okay, time to uninstall the bars. First I'll get that Memphis Shades fairing out of the way. And the next thing is to get this top clamp off. I added this Marlins thermometer here, but it uses the same like original bolt hole, so I'll pull those screws out here, get that thermometer off. Then we take the headlight out and loosen up this trim piece to kind of get it out of the way. If I remember correctly, there was a screw right in there that holds the front of this in place. I just thought I'd quick measure my bars in their current position and see how they look here. It looks like they're about, it's really about 13 inches right here the top there so put an actual rise then with the tilt more like a 12. Now we take this screw out of the headlight trim ring and then pull the trim ring off then take the headlight out with its mount by removing these eight screws that are around the perimeter. Now I could probably just let the headlight hang like this if I'm careful but I'm just going to take off the two electrical connectors right here so it's just out of the way less risk of damage. Now we loosen up this little nut right here that kind of uh, holds in place this little this trim piece here. Then uh, loosen up these nuts on the side. This is different than stock because of my Memphis Shades fairing that was on there. So I loosen these nuts up just enough so that the halves spread apart like this. And then uh, this trim piece can just lift up like that. It's got a hook on the back that hooked into there. So the next is to pull this screw out. There's a little nut on the inside that's a little tough to get at, but you can get your hand in there and a small wrench on it and then loosen that with the screwdriver and then uh, the cover will come off. Next will be to take the controls off and the grips. Uh, T27 tool for there and there on the clamp. And then for the control housing, T25 for that screw and that screw. On the touring bikes with the um, button right there, trip meter button, a lot of people find that a mystery because uh, you press it down to do its function, but to get it off, you flip it up and then it just slides this direction. You don't ever want to have your uh, clutch or brake master cylinder just hanging down because then the, a little bit of air that's in the reservoir will go up through your lines. So usually just crisscross them over the top of the tank. Uh, I can't get too far with it yet because I still have to unsnap this. To get the actual electronic control off, there's a little hinge at the bottom and there's a clip right here at the top so just stick a screwdriver under there and kind of pry it up and it'll separate. Okay, now that both sets of controls are off, since I'm not just changing bars, I'm changing risers too. I'm not gonna bother with the riser clamp. I'm just gonna go underneath and on each side, just pull out the big, that's a 
three quarter inch wrench for a half inch bolt required. Pull the bolts off the bottom of the riser and just take the whole assembly out. There's a little ground wire on the lower riser here too that I may or may not relocate. If I could find a spot for it, I will. Otherwise, uh, might just leave it off. Don't know how critical it is. I'll decide when I get in there. One thing I almost forgot about is disconnecting the throttle by wire, wire which is right there, down in the neck here. So I'll just pull that connector apart and I'll pull it up to the top here so that it's not snagging on anything. It was tricky to get the bolt to drop out of this side because the head was hitting this connector holder here. So I pulled the connector just out of the holder and then this ear here was able to flex enough that I was just barely able to get the bolt out of there. Now, got the handlebars off, so just uh, pull the throttle by wire out, pull the wire out of there. Just uh, push and pull at the same time to work it through there. In order to remove the stock bushings, it's easiest to get that center steel piece out. Uh, 7 16 deep wall quarter drive socket is a good size so just set it right on there and then just uh, tap it out with a hammer and then the rubber bushings pull out easy after that steel sleeve is out of there now I noticed these stock bushings are a little different style than uh, previous stuff I don't know if it's a 2020 thing or just a, a Milwaukee 8 thing but never seen them like this before they don't have those like sipes in them and they feel like they're a little more like a plasticky rather than a rubbery material I've only ever done this on uh, Dynas and, sport and, and Sportsters. Well, these solid riser bushings I bought aren't even close to fitting in there. That diameter is 0 0.04 of an inch too large. It is just not going to go. So that sucks, but I'll put the stock ones back in. Of course, then the stock bushings had to be kind of a pain to put back in, but I got them to start by... Um, pushing and twisting at the same time just enough so I could get a thread in the riser and then I was able to use the bolt on the bottom and the riser on the top to compress it and push the bushings back in the upper triple tree. Okay I've got the riser legs with the lower clamps assembled on there now. I don't see any place where this ground wire can go. It went to the old risers. Um, it was just providing a chassis ground from the triple tree to the risers. Really don't feel that that's totally necessary, so I'll just leave it floating around in here because I don't want to drill a hole in my new risers just to attach that thing. Now so that when I put this on here, this cover, and of course I'm going to want the wires to come up that center hole, so I'm going to take and go down by the neck and disconnect my turn signal and control wiring and just pull them up to the top side. Okay, so now I've slid the new cover down into place and it seems to fit pretty well. Now I screwed on the uh, lower half of the clamps. Okay, now I've got my bars just thrown on there with just four screws in the top clamp, just snug, just to hold them in place so I could set my controls up there. And then I think it'd be easy to just be able to push the wires through and pull them out with it mounted here, rather than doing it on the bench and struggling with the bars moving around and stuff. So it's such a short run. I think it'll be easy to get the wires through, so I'll just do it on the bike. So I just set my master cylinders on there now just to hold them in place so I can push the wires through when they're not in their position yet. They're kind of closer to the bar end, but just give me room to work in the hole here. My trick for pulling wires through is to use a trimmer line like this. For taller bars or where there's a lot more complex bends, what I'll do is I'll put a string in there and I'll use the air hose to blow it through and then grab it. And then I'll tape the trimmer line to the string to pull the trimmer line through and then I'll tape the wires, the control wires and stuff, to the trimmer line, yank them through the bars. But since these are so short, I should be able to just push this trimmer line right through these bars. Okay, so I got two lines through the bars now, and out the middle, uh, this one for the throttle by wire. The idea is I'll pull the throttle by wire connectors until they get probably just past the bend. And then with this one, I'll pull in the other wires and then pull them all together and hopefully get them through there. So that doesn't want to pull apart, that's why I have like this kind of hook on the end. I put it in between the wires on the connector, so then I'll then squeeze it down. I'll wrap that all up with tape. It's less likely that way to just pull out of the tape. Now I'm trying to use as little tape as possible in order to keep my bundle as small as possible to make it glide smoothly through the bars. There's a pretty nice slope there. I'm not too worried about the bends, but right here 
where the hole is and that's punched up right there. So right here, it's pretty thin. So it might be a little tough to get the connectors past that point. In accordance with the prophecy, the connectors would not fit past that bump. So I took off just one connector, just the two wire one, which is for heated grips, which I don't have anyway. I should just cut it, but we'll keep it as is. And then, uh, so I was able then to push the wire through just by hand to here. And then I pulled the wires down and then taped my pull cord to the wires and got them back in the hole. And they're now about here. And now I've taken my turn signal and control wires and got that connected to my other pull cord. And now I'll try and do the old push pull trick and get everything to go through there all at once. Okay, it was just not gonna happen. I mean, this stuff is just too bulky. All these together for a one inch handlebar on the inside, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and a half are really easy to wire. And I'm not going to take all the wires out of their protective sheaths just to get them through there. I don't want to do that because that leaves wires potentially to rub through just their individual insulation on the inside of the bar over time. And then you just got gremlin style electrical problems that are, you know, intermittent, real pain. So I've got the throttle by wire through there. That's the only required one. And then the other ones, as before, I'll just run them down. Uh, probably just run them right along with the uh, hydraulic cables to uh, get them into the uh, steering neck. Okay, so I got everything reassembled, tightened up, got my wires all tie wrapped in place where I'd want them, including inside of the headlight area. Guess I could put the switch back on. Now it seems we're about 14 inches, right to the middle of the control there. Uh, remember before, I think it was 12 inches with the stock bars. Nice. It'll take me a few rides to get everything figured out exactly where I want the bars and the controls, but that's a good starting point right there. Good height, I like to pull back. Feels good. If you'd like to see more random garage things, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you'll get random notifications when a new Random Garage video is posted. Thanks for watching another episode of Random Garage here in Sturgis. And remember, whatever you do, make sure you're always doing something.